So I got a request from someone to show some more footage of my living stone eye African cichlid, my Nimbochromus. So I figured why not do a fish profile and along the way I can show my guy through the different stages since I bought him. This is back when I first got him. He was larger than a juvenile, but I wouldn't say medium or even close to fully grown as you'll see him later. He's on the bottom there, the camouflage looking fish, kind of getting chased around a bit. This was probably about two years ago. Now we're getting a closer shot of him right there. Let's dive right into the water parameters for these guys. It's pretty typical of Malawi African cichlids, 74 to 84 degrees. Really just remem remember the number 80. If you're around 80 degrees, you're usually in good shape. Now the pH, some people jump on you in chat forums and things like that if you don't have the exact pH. I tend to think the range is a little wider than, than those people try to argue. 7.4 to 8.8, .8, somewhere in there, you'll probably be pretty good as long as your water is stable. And then these guys get a maximum of 10 inches, I believe in the wild, probably in the aquarium, some of the males will get up to eight or nine inches. The picture that you see there on the lower right is David Livingstone. This is a little historical nugget here. I knew his name because I'm a bit of a history buff, but I had no idea he was responsible for the naming of this fish. That's right, the British explorer here who was one of the, 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 the founders of you know, exploring Africa and what led to imperialism. And you might know him from the famous expression, Dr. Livingston, I presume, which is what Henry Stanley said to him when he found him in Africa. So back in 1856, I thought that was an interesting thing to share that I came across. So let's talk about diet now for a living stone eye. You can see right here, he's munching on some, some algae or something on the leaves there. These guys eat typical cichlid food, pellets, flakes, bloodworms are always good for them. I would suggest putting some bloodworms in their diet. You can see he had a puffy eye back here. I wasn't sure who did that to him, but it healed. So yeah, give them their bloodworms because these guys are hunters. In fact, they're known as sleeper fish because they hide on the bottom. And this is this has been shown, you know, seen in in Lake Malawi and maybe even in a fish tank. You might witness this. They kind of play dead, so they got the nickname sleeper fish, and that's their way of kind of setting a trap. They wait for a smaller fish to come near them, and then they they attack, and then and then they 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 feast on that fish. And I've seen these guys that can be pretty aggressive. I would categorize them as an advanced African cichlid. Not all Africans are very hard to keep. I don't think peacocks are hard and buna aren't very hard. These guys, I would say it's a little trickier because of their aggression. You can keep them with other Malawi cichlids that have a strong bite, but community fish, forget it. Don't even think about it. And if you want evidence, look right there. That right there was a dead rose line shark and a dead red tail shark. And it was Rakondo who was responsible right there. I did not witness the incident. My uh, cleaning lady saw it. I got there too late to do anything about it. But yeah, make sure you forget about putting these guys with community fish. Now I had him in timeout here because of his behavior. Wasn't sure what I was going to do, give him away. And unfortunately, I had to have a rose line shark in there as well which he had attacked before, but I had nowhere else to put these guys at this time. This is back before I had too much equipment, didn't have too many heaters, too many aquariums. I'd love to get some uh, other equipment. If you look right here, you can see that he's kind of in there hiding, like in the woods, stalking. He's, he's probably waiting for that rose line shark to come near him so he can attack. And I changed the settings here on the video so you can see a little bit more clear, sharpen it up a bit, but he's just like a little stalker. And then, believe it or not, that's the same fish right there. You don't have the beige-ish camouflage look anymore. He's darkened up, but his face has gotten a bright blue. And of course, he's a lot thicker, a lot tougher, a lot meaner looking, and he has a very impressive bite. When you put food in there, you can just see his, his jaw is like twice the size of, of any other African I have in here. So like and subscribe, please. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of a, of a living stone eye fish it's hardly a comprehensive view just wanted to show some more footage and and talk about how these guys are a bit more aggressive than other africans share your comments below that's a nice shot of them right there share your comments below if you've if you've kept this fish or if you're thinking about it just keep in mind they are more advanced i think than other african cichlids you have to be a little bit more cautious see you in the next video